Welcome outliers, it's great to be back and we hope you all had a safe break and are nursing your sunburns in the library as the school year is a few weeks away from the end. There's a lot you missed over the break, so as promised, we will keep you up to date on what you want and need to know. Sam, take it away. Two inmates escaped from a Quebec jail in a helicopter. Police arrested three people after the inmates escaped and the inmates quickly surrendered to police. A private jet in South End, Indiana crashed into homes, killing two and injuring others. Seton Hall University mourns the loss of a pregnant lacrosse coach after she was killed in a bus accident. A wildfire broke out in a resort area near Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. There were no injuries. Students at the University of Central Florida had to evacuate after explosives were found in the dorm of a student who had recently taken his life. Chicago Public Schools were closed 54 schools as part of a plan to address the $1 billion deficit. Parents protest as it will affect 30,000 students. Hillary Clinton vocalized her support for gay marriage as the battle makes its way to the Supreme Court. 17, 29, 31, 52, 53, and 31. These numbers were on one winning ticket that was sold in New Jersey for $338 million Powerball jackpot. The owner has not been identified. As the number four cell phone company, T-Mobile has decided to rid contracts for phones, focusing on installment plans. Starting April 12th, the company will officially begin selling the iPhone. Italy's highest criminal court overturned an acquittal of Amanda Knox and orders a new trial in the 2007 slaying of her roommate. A script from the popular TV show Breaking Bad goes missing after actor Brian Cranston's car was broken into. Two Georgia teens were arrested for slaying a baby in a stroller and wounding the mother. Nelson Mandela was admitted to the hospital with a lung infection yesterday. South African presidency says he is responding positively to treatment. Banks in Cyprus reopened for the first time since March 16th with limits on transactions. Limits are said to keep customers from draining their accounts in lieu of the recent bailout. A judge ruled that Oscar Pistorius can leave South Africa to compete with conditions. The runner awaits trial for the shooting death of his girlfriend. He may only leave the country if he provides an itinerary of his plans at least a week before departure. Lawyers say the Colorado theater shooting suspect offers to plead guilty to avoid the death penalty. President Obama appoints Julie Pearson as the first female director of the Secret Service. For years, the opinion of same-sex marriage in America has been shifting, and this week the fight for marriage equality takes center stage at the Supreme Court. The justices will hear arguments on both sides of the topic and then decide the constitutionality. A new CBS poll shows 53% of Americans support same-sex marriage, while 39% oppose it. In the past two weeks, seven moderate and Republican senators have announced their support bringing the total to 47 senators. For the first time, more conservative states admit that it may be safer to back gay marriage than to risk being the last ones to join the cause. When the court makes a ruling, we'll have full coverage here on The Outlier. For those of you back from spring break, be aware that the FDA recently released a warning pertaining to henna tattoos. The popular temporary tattoo art may not actually be temporary at all. Some consumers have reported reactions to the tattoos, including skin redness, blisters, lesions, loss of pigmentation, and even permanent scarring. Traditional henna is a reddish-brown coloring made from a plant, and the FDA believes the problem arose due to the use of black henna, which includes harsh chemicals such as PPD, which causes skin reactions. So take note of the color next time you decide to ink. Big baby news from the Today Show, weekend anchor Jenna Wolf came on the show Wednesday to make three big announcements. The first is that she's pregnant. The second is it's a girl who's due in August. And third, when she came on the Today Show, she also came out on the Today Show. She says she's expecting the baby with partner and NBC correspondent Stephanie Gosk. You look great today. Thank you very okay. much. And, and, and Jenna is here with, uh, can I say, or no, I'm no, not going to say, you, you should say, Big news. I have some big news. This is uh, big for me. I'm actually uh, pregnant. I'm quite pregnant, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Jenna will be blogging about her adventure on moms.today.com. Grant Inman is an ASU student and the creativity behind Pomo and Kitsch. Inman launched the one-man band in 2012 and has since gained popularity. His song Autofocus has hit over 36,000 views on YouTube. Autofocus is a very creative and alternative video. What was the idea behind it? Uh, the idea behind it was to create something that was as 
kind of filthy as possible in, in a in a family friendly way. So no no censor, but still trying to keep it PG. It, the first cut got taken down. Okay. It, it was fully taken down by who? YouTube. Or? YouTube. Really? YouTube deemed it uh, inappropriate. Okay. Which is understandable, and the new version is still inappropriate, but it's. A little bit more friendly. So what exactly inspires you? And now that YouTube's taken it down, have you had to change your focus and your level of creativity? Uh, no. I, I think the, the reason I went by Pomo and Kitsch was because I didn't want myself, you know, Grant Inman, to be personally responsible for anything I said or, or wrote. And so the music is really reflecting that. I mean, it's it's a little left to center, which is which is what I love in music. But it's really, really 80s. That's, that's definitely why I was I caught on to yeah. it. I'm a product child of you know the sure. 80s, so to speak. Absolutely. So who is your music idol? Is there anyone that really shapes your genre and how you produce? Ooh, I, I would say uh, David Byrne, The Talking Heads. Um, there's a there's too many. Chromio. Uh, I don't know. I'm just a nerd. I like I like synthesizers that sound cheesy. So anything that sounds bad, Italian 80s electro is the <laughs> best. So. Do you have any processes for your creativity or do you have any superstitions that you like to stick to, especially during the musical process? Um, trying not to irritate my neighbors. I mean, that's that's the one thing right now that's dictating. I'm, I'm writing a new album and it seems like every time I get something rolling and I want to hear it in speakers, my neighbor's banging on my door. And so pretty much just the, 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 the inspiration just comes from not being able to sleep in Arizona because it's too hot for a Midwestern. <laughs> so. Right. Well, tell us a little bit about your new album. How are you gaining a following? Um, basically, I've, I, I've been getting internet radio play, a, a lot of it, and I've been getting cool emails from people all around the world saying that they've heard the album and that they're buying the album from my website. That's amazing. Which means that it goes directly to me and I can fund the next album. So. Right. Yeah, that, that comes out April 30th. Is well, the, we're excited for yeah. it. And I heard we were talking before, but what do you do for those people that do reach out for you? Um, basically, I try and make it as personal as possible. So anybody who buys a hard copy of my album off of my website, I write them a handwritten letter. They get all the downloads uh, for the PDFs for all the lyric sheets handwritten, but they actually get a physical letter written by me, and usually it's some ridiculous treasure map. Or so you're a creative mastermind. You just like no, to mess around with everyone. No, I just like to yeah. <laughs> I, I like to see people open up letters and and you know hopefully be creeped out. A little. It's little, a nice personal touch. Yeah, it's interesting. I couldn't agree more. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> meeting with us today. We will have the video on our Facebook page and keep watching. There's a craze sweeping Europe right now. It combines all kinds of things guys like bars, video games, and peeing. A man in England put a screen over urinal at a bar and put a game that people play by aiming. You direct your flow left and right and steer and play until you don't have to go anymore, basically. You can slide down mountains, hit penguins, and even answer quiz questions and they'll be hoping their hands-free gaming will be this year's hottest release. <laughs> I see what you did there, Reuters reporter. This hopefully one-player game will revolutionize the way you pee. And you thought I was messy before, Mom. A colorful and exciting festival, the annual celebration of Holi, also known as the Festival of Colors, is celebrated by Hindus in India and around the world. On Wednesday, thousands of people celebrated by holding a bonfire and throwing colored powder and water at one another. This honors the beginning of spring and various Hindu legends. The custom closes the gaps between social classes and brings Hindus together. Spanish Fork, Utah and Los Angeles are cities in the U.S. that also take part in the movement. With a check of what's trending on the internet, we turn now to Kelsey Tardia with What's Trending. Hey, Kels. Hi, Mike. As the Supreme Court figures out marriage equality, Facebookers are showing their support by changing their profile pictures. The Human Rights Campaign, a group advocating LGBTQ rights, posted this image on its Facebook page Tuesday, encouraging its one million followers to make it their profile picture. While some fans immediately set the red and pink equal sign as their avatars, others have created parodies of the logo, and the HRC has adopted many of them into a cover photo for their Facebook page. The outlier loves Les Mis. We've mentioned it in nearly every episode, and here's one day more. In a recent video, the movie musical's ensemble has added a special new member, the Internet's favorite screaming goat. Check it out. One more time. One more day. I feel my 
my soul on fire. <laughs> She's not there. That never gets old. So far, this goat has performed with One Direction, Tayo Cruz, Justin Bieber, and of course, T Swizzle. Now I'm lying on the cold, hard <laughs> so, if goats are busy singing and screaming like humans, who's making the goat noises? Answer Pickles the kitten. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so freaky. It appears we're living in an era of animal identity crisis. How about this for Throwback Thursday? Long before he became the handsome lead in 500 Days of Summer and Looper, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was a child star known for his role in NBC's Third Rock from the Sun. A video has surfaced on YouTube of Mr. Gordon-Levitt playing Celebrity Jeopardy in 1997. Take a look. In Caulfield, the hero of this Salinger novel, hates movies, phonies, and his classmate, Ernest Morrow. Joey. What is Catcher in the Rye? Right. I'm so excited. You read it. That's my favorite book. Good for you. Pick again. Uh, <laughs> he was just as adorable back in the day, though now he does have a better haircut. That's what's trending. Back to you, Mike. Thanks, Kelsey. Coming up next week, we're going to talk to the people behind this video. It's like your mommy They sound amazing. That'll be next week. That's our show for this week. Be sure to connect with us on Twitter and Facebook. Search for The Outlier ASU. Until next week, I'm Mike Smith. And I'm Sam Kukulis. Why be normal when you could be an outlier?